Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope your day is doing, going great. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And um, it's really, really amazing. It's always impressive uh, to be able to reach out to you uh, on this platform. And wherever you are joining us from, I encourage you to please and please uh, stay with us uh, to the very end of the deliberations today. It promises to be engaging. It promises to be beautiful. It promises uh, to be insightful. It promises uh, to be high opening. Every time that we get to talk like this, I believe, uh, especially for me, that journalism is not static. Journalism is dynamic. Journalism is uh, evolving every day. And as we are going to realize uh, when uh, in the first part of today's deliberation, uh, you are going to totally agree with me that um, we continue to be in new phases uh, as far as journalism is concerned. And um, the best way for you to get the best out of it is to be open-minded, is to adjust to the new realities and to be one of the first line uh, journalists to move to changes and welcome new tools. So thank you, thank you for me much for joining us. My name is Paul Adepoju and I'm the community manager uh, for the International Center for Journalists, uh, Pamela World Forum on Global Crisis Reporting. And um, this is uh, the second day, uh, the second uh, episode uh, in our uh, in our mathematics reporting series. Uh, last week we kicked it off. It was really really exciting. It was intriguing. It was high opening uh, to really understand and appreciate how vast uh, mathematics reporting could be. And um, we had an interesting session. Those that registered are already looking at watching the videos, and they already have. Um, they already have the lecture notes uh, delivered directly to their inbox. But if you are joining us for the first time this week, uh, you've not missed a lot. So we, you can also access the tools and resources that we shared last week. You can rewatch the videos and um, I hope that you stay with us today and um, to the end of the whole session. So uh, today we are trying to do two things in one. Uh, today, you know, Trez Zap is uh, making the waves and uh, I'm going to quickly provide you with some information regarding what you need to know about Trez and how you as a journalist can get the best out of it. But before I start, I know some are already doing it already. Please, please, please actively engage with us using the chat box. Tell us your name. Tell us where you are joining us from. Uh, tell us how you are enjoying the session. Whatever you want, uh, uh, interact with us using the chat box and um, we'll read your comments. And if you have specific questions, please, uh, it will be nice if we can use the Q&A tool on, um, on the Zoom platform for your questions. I also want to say a big shout out and um, to everybody that is joining us on um, that are joining us on Facebook. Uh, we are always active too on Facebook. We have a vibrant uh, Facebook ecosystem. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for being part of our our discussions today. And uh, I hope your day is going beautifully well. And I hope uh, you are able to uh, sit back, relax, take a break from your very, very busy, uh, busy daily schedule and um, learn from us and um, have fun, also relax, engage with us. Uh, so today I want to get it all started with a thread. So now in the comment section, if you can engage with me, uh, what are your initial thoughts about the about Threads, uh, the new app uh, from Meta, uh, the company that owns Facebook. Have you signed up? Are you Do you have an account already? How are you enjoying it so far? Is it really, really something that you believe uh, can really, really make a difference? Uh, I want you to tell us how you are actively using the platform. If you want to raise your hand, if you want to talk to me, talk to us live, I will be really, really appreciative of that. But I have some quick housekeeping tools, housekeeping information uh, that could be important uh, for you as you use as you use this platform. And uh, I have a presentation ready that I would uh, that I would like uh, to share uh, with you regarding uh, my initial thoughts uh, about this tool. And um, I hope uh, you can 
you can enjoy it. By the time of by the time I'm done with talk, we are done with talking threads. Uh, we are going to welcome our our guest today. So everybody, uh, let's talk about threads and uh, what I think uh, you should know right now. So I titled this session the first part of this of today's webinar: threads. Uh, what journalists uh, need to know. So threads, as it is, uh, is a social media app. Uh, that was developed by uh, Meta. And why are we talking about it? This session is not sponsored by Meta, but we are talking about it because it is taking uh, the media landscape by storm. Every now and then, everyone, every now and then, we talk about the trends in the media ecosystem. We talk about what we are supposed to know. We talk about issues that can directly impact our practice as journalists, as media practitioners. And the tools are the two systems, the two kits are rapidly evolving. They are rapidly expanding. So it's important that uh, we keep abreast uh, with what uh, we have now. And um, yes, so please, uh, so that, so um, these are the quick insights that I would like to share. So um, unlike Facebook, um, Thread seems to have longer characters. Uh, Facebook has around 200 plus characters, so but Thread uh, has more characters. And this, how does this affect you as a journalist, as a content producer, as a media house? So with, with 500 characters, you have slightly longer opportunity to see more things. And um, so it also uh, allows you to be able to more properly compose your content and engage the audience. Is it rapidly getting rapidly getting popular? Uh, if you read last week's newsletter, I said it is going to cross the hundred million user uh, uh, timeline in the record time, and it did that over the weekend already. So it, we have more than hundred million users. So which means we can no longer ignore it. We have to come to terms with it. And unlike other tools that you have to actually sign up on its own, uh, the way getting a Trez account works is uh, you have to connect your Instagram account uh, to that. Your Instagram handle becomes your trades handle. And while this is being debated extensively, there is a there is a little issue that it helps us to overcome already, which is the issue of fake accounts that seems to be a major challenge on Twitter. So uh, you are uh, it's expected that human actions are directly involved in registering individual accounts. So which means um, while those that are behind the boards may be trying to figure out how best to get this uh, eco uh, get this done, uh, we are seeing, at least for now, real people having real conversations. If you are looking using Facebook, uh, Twitter very well, you would know that once in a while you see contents that are not um, that are from bot accounts so that are not relevant, and so we, we need a tool, a medium to actually uh, deal with this. So that is an advantage that uh, we they believe trades have over um, what we currently have at the moment. So you can share photos, you can share videos, uh, you can also share links. So these are the multi is a multimedia messaging platform uh, for conversations. Uh, so which means uh, you are able to share a wide range of content on the platform. You can screen grab, you can use, uh, you can format your content to serve uh, on this platform. So uh, you are calling on, um, I'll come to the comments. Please, you can continue to put your comments in the chat box. I'll review your comment and share some of my thoughts regarding your comments. So um, another observation that I made was that um, you can't, there is no web version for trades yet. Uh, you have to download an app. Uh, you have to download an app to access it. You know, you can access Twitter and Facebook on your computer, but for trades, uh, you have to download the app, uh, at, least, at least for now. And I think one of the reasons, probably it's a marketing and promotional policy to get as much as many downloads as possible in a record time before opening up the um, before opening up the web fashion uh, uh, to more users. So that is what we currently have at the moment. For you to use it, you have to download the app only. So we don't have the web version yet. 
And there's also an hashtag issue. If you are quite conversant with Twitter a lot, you know that how, and of course, Facebook, the hashtags are really, really good for you to follow trend. Uh, why you can use hashtag, uh, you know, when men, different individuals are posting about a singular issue, uh, hashtags can bring you all of these tools, all of those information at the same time. But on trade, it doesn't work like that. And so it's a tool, is a feature that uh, a lot of those that are researching and mining data from social media platforms would really love that uh, functionality to be activated. But there's an issue with it. So it, it's not working as smoothly or as ideally as I would like it to be. And uh, for content creators, uh, you know, uh, many, most of the social media platforms have subscription service uh, in which uh, content creators can generate revenue from their content directly from their users. But that doesn't happen yet, uh, at least for now on threads. So if you have been generating revenues, if you have subscribers on other platforms, uh, we don't have that at the moment uh, on threads. Which, um, which, and I think that was, a, I saw a post uh, from the CEO of Meta, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, who said the goal for now is to run the platform hands-free until they are crossing the billion users. So that is a lofty target that they've set for themselves. So we don't know whether um, they would be allowing uh, monetization via subscription model uh, for content creators at the moment. Yet now another important tool, at least for those that for the tech savvy, uh, for those that run social media content creation, is the fact that uh, public API uh, for this platform is still is not yet available. What do I mean by public API? You know there are some content management systems, uh, social media content management systems that exist. I'm talking about tools like Buffer, uh, in which on a singular platform you can share your content on lots of social media handles. Um, because as the, this plan, these services are built on APIs, publicly available APIs, and uh, so which allows integration and seamless uh, sharing of content across platforms. We don't have that yet for threads. And uh, it's unfortunately a very important feature for content creators. So if that does not exist, it will be extremely, extremely difficult uh, to have seamless content uh, creation. We are going to get to how that is impacting the potential danger of that in a little bit, but take it as that we don't have a public API yet. So content, social media content management systems uh, cannot fully, fully utilize uh, um, that too at the moment. And the next thing is this, um, you know, if you have uh, an Instagram account uh, for me and uh, you can have five or you can have three, two or three uh, additional uh, Instagram accounts logged in at the moment at the same time that you can just simply switch. A similar one exists for Twitter. You can easily switch between um, between. Uh, these accounts without having to log out. But that does not exist yet on threads. Uh, for you to switch accounts, the only option available right at the moment is you have to log out of that uh, account that you have and now log in into the new one, which is which which could be extremely, extremely uh, uncomfortable and stressful uh, for content uh, moderators. So, but that is what we have at the moment uh, regarding uh, regarding that. So, and um, so probably the leading uh, challenge uh, for for trades right now are concerns around its privacy, its privacy rule. Uh, the more you read about uh, the privacy rules of uh, threads, the more concerned you get about data privacy, about how realistic, uh, how how, why is the app requesting for so much access, for lots of access? What does it, what do they want to do with that? Uh, they want a lot of information about for you. They want a lot of authorization. And I think well, one that really was quite intriguing was that you cannot just delete that account without automatically deleting your Instagram account. So it's quite interesting to see. And it's so concerning to the extent that the EU, the service, this app is not available yet 
in the European Union countries because the region is really, really concerned about uh, the privacy, uh, the privacy uh, concerns that uh, this hub comes, uh, comes with. And uh, there is also concern about uh, passport sharing concepts. For instance, if uh, at its at we as a social media content moderation and sharing currently exist. If we were using a content management system, uh, you can anybody can you can seamlessly uh, just uh, integrate that allow access to multiple users. But for multiple users to have access to that um, to come to create curate and moderate and share content. On, an, on the media organizations or social media uh, threads account, you have to be actively directly sharing passwords. And that is a lot of mess because you have to give the password to that account to lots of individuals. And they would also have to be able to have access to your inst uh, to organizational Instagram account, which was not supposed to be so, especially if there were uh, public KPIs to integrate. So you have to be extremely, extremely concerned and uh, careful with how uh, you share uh, your passwords, with how you, sh you share your uh, content. Uh, yes, uh, so it's really, really uh, concerning at the moment. But like our experts in the field said that uh, these issues are expected uh, to improve um, in the coming weeks. And so that is, uh, those, that is a concern that we know. So now what are the trips and, uh, that we need to know? You know, um, you know, sometimes even though you can't, it doesn't sync across devices, you have to directly download it. Uh, there are some notes apps uh, that you can actually seamlessly use. For instance, uh, you can create uh, old fashioned, we can have the old fashioned way of actually posting content on social media. For instance, if you have a Google document or a spreadsheet uh, that you can share across your organization so that this post are actually copied and pasted, you have a sheet of uh, like a tweet sheet, uh, a social media content uh, page by uh, your organizations that uh, you can use note apps, text-based note apps, so that uh, you can still be able to control, regulate, and moderate what goes on your official organization's page uh, centrally, even though individuals have to download the app uh, directly. So if you have an app like a Google Doc, for instance, or Notes app like uh, the native Notes app on your, uh, on your Apple device, uh, that allows for easy sharing of content with, uh, easy sharing of content with different users, Everybody can easily see what you are trying to post. Everybody can that have access to the app can actually just lift, copy, and paste content directly uh, using that. And another thing that I think you can be optimistic is that we know all of these apps as users' complaints increase, as uh, people express concerns about how they are working and or how they are not working. Uh, they tend to the tech team behind these tools uh, tend to listen, improve and um, get people the feature they are asking. And if you are looking at the history of uh, Facebook, of Meta, the company that owns threads, uh, is something that is expected. They seem to consistently uh, move around uh, with what people are asking. So we expect that uh, some of these concerns are we quickly uh, be, you are able to actually they are able to actually deal with it. So for now, so in addition to that optimism, I think it's important as everybody uh, that I follow in my ecosystem seem to appreciate or uh, endure uh, the shortcomings of the hub because of the breath of fresh air and new starts uh, that it presents with social media, uh, content creation and curation and sharing. And, you know, there are a lot of complaints around the way Twitter currently exists. Uh, people have reservations. The fact that you have to pay to be able to get a lot of features on Twitter, uh, it seems to be luring people uh, that don't really believe that um, a, a social media platform should be that heavily monetized uh, to consider um, moving to uh, another tool. And you are seeing a lot of international organizations, agencies, corporate entities, uh, key, key voices in different bits that you cover 
are now sharing their thoughts on social media. And some of them are saying that they are seeing more engagement with their content on, on threads than they would have gotten on Twitter. So um, if you've been struggling with engagement, I think uh, it's, still possible, it's still recommended that you explore it and uh, get used to it. And uh, so we also you also need to start following our stakeholders in your sector because a lot of them are already there. And I also encourage you to follow uh, other journalists uh, so that you can naturally understand and connect with individual persons of personal struggles and encounters, how they are feeling the platform and how they are imagining it. So uh, imagining it uh, developing or getting applied to their sector. And two things that I also want you to do is uh, story ideas. Uh, there are a lot of story ideas that you can find, for instance, how, uh, how can experts in your space uniquely utilize this tool. Uh, how, what are, for instance, if you are covering health, uh, how can uh, threads be used to uniquely serve health communication, advancing health messaging, uh, and what lessons from the, the from the limitations of other hubs that you believe um, that you believe um, this tool can be better harnessed to overcome. So you can do it across sectors, depending on the bit that you're covering. For instance, if it's climate change, how can you use threads uh, to expand uh, climate change communication? Uh, so you can have story ideas that are specific to uh, the issues that you cover. Another story idea that I think is really, really worthy of mentioning that you as a journalist can actually work on is your regions or your countries or your local authorities' perception to regulation. Uh, what is What are your agencies, tech agencies in your country? What are they saying? Uh, why are they, why is the here you bothered about privacy uh, while your country is not bothered about privacy? So what are the regulations in place to safeguard uh, individuals' data, considering the fact that uh, users at, of social media uh, still believe uh, some users are always uh, their vocal uh, advocate for more control and more prioritization of users' privacy on, this, on some of the social media platforms. So you can explore what um, the conversations in your country uh, seem to be around the issues of regulation, around the issues of story ideas. Then you um, can also do stories around how this is going to disrupt or impact uh, what we already know around social, communi uh, social communication. I, every year, uh, reports are released around that predict how the media landscape would evolve in that year. So you can go back to people that have made that prediction and ask questions around how um, threads uh, is really, really, are we still in line with those predictions? Or are those predictions, uh, are these developments um, sidelining the predictions? And how do we get back on track? So for me, uh, my advice for you is, uh, uh, to ensure that uh, you keep yourself abreast with the latest insights. Uh, I encourage you to get, even if you are not using your account, your trace account at the moment, secure your handle, uh, secure your account for now. And it's better to have it and not use it than not to have it and eventually think you need it. So it's better to just secure your account, keep it somewhere and uh, look at, review what is happening on the platform, get enlightened on how to keep yourself safe. And um, you start your journey, uh, you start your journey from here, from there. So thank you, uh, thank you for that. And uh, with that, I would like to take, uh, address some of the comments uh, that have been dropped. Uh, so I, people are already dropping their handles. So if you want to connect on trades as journalists, I encourage you can do that, it's totally fine. And um, so I'm looking at the comments already. Okay, if you'd like to speak loud, if you want to, if you want to talk, if you want to pass your communicate, if you want to share your thoughts, before our mathematics expert joins us, you can raise your hand, and I would, uh, I would open your mic if you have a thought on threads uh, that uh, we're not addressing what I just described. Uh, you are welcome to raise your hand and share your, share your thoughts uh, on it. So I'll go quickly to uh, to the comments and um, so Mike uh, writes uh, that um, okay, Trezor has been great. Just joined uh, Blue Sky. 
social the other day and it's wonderful yes so many similar platforms yes i totally agree with you we have so many similar platforms now uh mastodon uh, trails blue sky social which ones will keep traction trails has the help of instagram of instagram's established audience i absolutely agree with you uh, trails will be leveraging uh trails will be leveraging on instagram's uh handle uh like population it has i think instagram has uh, 2.5 billion users so it will be easy for your trades to get a few couple of hundreds of millions and when uh, where hundreds of millions of people are conversing i think uh, that is where we have to as journalists we have to uh, keep listening and uh, Chibike wrote, I'm on it. I feel the engagement is better for people with larger following on Instagram already. Are you absolutely correct? Uh, it'd be individuals that have the fact that many people that are following you are, are naturally be following you even before you join the app means you're actually having users already before you join the app. A tech analyst explained this really nicely. He, uh, he said, um, you are not, it seems as if you're already there even though you are not yet there. So you're already building followers and uh, it's intriguing. It's really, really nice to see how uh, this has actually evolved. And uh, well, it's 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 really, really um, intriguing. And every time I look at how uh, people are getting followers already, even before they start doing anything, I think it's really, really nice to see that um, it seems like it's also the right time for it. But like we said, uh, it's interesting. Uh, so Ippolito would like to know uh, what is the alternative to using hashtags? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think um, hashtags are really, really important. Uh, indirectly, we seem to have been programmed uh, to recognizing hashtags only. And I think we have to start creatively or intuitively figuring out how to be tracking down trends. And I think for now, you may have to do the hash search yourself. And for me, I was initially when hashtags were released, they were quite intriguing and exciting. But uh, the fact that anybody can use an hashtag to promote anything, to drive attention to an issue that is not even related, really made uh, it really, really concerning and uh, limited its use. So probably we'll be reventing, they will be reventing uh, the tool that is similar to hashtag to give us uh, that feeling. So Suzanne is asking why trades when you have Twitter, any noticeable major differences? Yes, I said the word counts are different. You know, uh, Twitter is uh, trying to, uh, is aggressively monetizing its platform. And so there are lots of limitations. For instance, the number of tweets you can see per day, uh, the verification that you can see uh, on a daily basis. So those are really, really changing. Uh, go to join this platform for the first time. Hope to learn a lot about trade, or do I have little experience about it? Yeah, no problem. Uh, we are there to really do that. Sherry would like to know, can we really say that trolls can be easily detected or bad from joining trade as being claimed by some trade users? I think so. Uh, you can, a troll can easily create a Twitter account, but creating multiple accounts on trade is extremely difficult. You have to have Instagram accounts. Even if you created a Instagram, an Instagram account for trades purpose, you wouldn't have a lot of followers on that troll account that is new. So your impact will still be extremely limited. Yeah, so um, for now, uh, that is, keep the questions coming. And uh, I think it's going to guide us. Like, like I said, this is a continuing conversation uh, that uh, we will continue to have uh, as time goes on. And um, so which brings me to the other part of our conversation today, and which is, uh, which is uh, bringing, uh, bringing the mathematics series that we started last week uh, into practical sense. Now, last week, uh, we introduced mathematics reporting and um, the attempt, the goal that we are trying to achieve is to make everybody to uh, journalists to see mathematics differently, to engage with mathematics differently, and um, to be able to see solutions and uh, new uh, insights to reporting mathematics. So we had a mathematics journalist last week. Today, uh, we are really, really, uh, we are really, really excited uh, to be discussing uh, mathematics uh, solutions uh, for crisis reporting. And we are joined by Dr. Africa, who is a mathematician and AI entrepreneur. 
How are you doing? And thank you for joining us today. Hi, Paul. Thank you very much. I'm very good. Uh, audio? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you right now. Okay, so thank you very much, Paul. Yeah, I'm very good. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we start talking about uh, mathematics, uh, you met us, we're talking about uh, threads. Do you have any opinion on threads? Oh, <laughs> so, well, I work with data, okay? So, because I work with data, I'm a bit cautious, okay? So, um, there still need the proper, proper approvals and so on. So, let's see how, how it does evolve, okay? So, ensure that the data and the privacy are, I mean, are secure for the users and, and so on, okay? So, let's wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> but do you have an account, though? No yet, because in in Europe it's not uh, it's not released. Yes, I think uh, that really really aligned with what I what I also told uh, those that are on the call that um, there are a lot of uh, when I read the concerns the queries around the privacy the privacy issues I was shocked that this <laughs> this is uh, this is absolutely uh, seriously unheard of and uh, so it's quite interesting to see how uh, the company is going to convince the region uh, to expand uh, to allow its people to start using it so i'm really really interested do you think um both as an expert do you see do you see these uh, platform running the way they want it to run without compromising a lot of privacy issues? Let's see how, how they do, okay? So I'm not also very convinced about that all social networks are linked together. So this at the end, I mean, can can be, yeah, can be a problem for privacy, the data sharing and so on. And also, well, I mean, Meta, Facebook, you know, needs to be very careful, has a reputation on that side. And I think they need to be, extra careful, but I'm sure is that um, with the GDPR uh, regulation that we have in Europe is going to cost time at least. And if it's not deployed globally, I don't think, well, but well, let's see, let's see. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your sharing your thoughts on that issue. For those that do not know our guests, uh, uh, Dr. Perianes uh, is an expert and uh, she Together today, we'll be talking about uh, the remarkable roles that mathematics uh, is playing in solving global crisis. And uh, hopefully we'll be in, uh, in uh, delving into the innovative ways that mathematical concepts have been applied to address pressing issues uh, worldwide. Uh, Dr. Perianes is a distinguished mathematician and AI artificial intelligence entrepreneur. Uh, she's dedicated to leveraging data and machine learning uh, to bridge health inequalities in low and middle income countries. Uh, she's a founder and CEO of Benchy.ai and uh, Cosa, Cosa Foundry. Uh, she leads uh, the development of cutting edge uh, AI products that collect robust data and personalize clinical and behavioral interventions. Our work supports uh, healthcare professionals and patients by providing tailored recommendations and incentives. Uh, prior to our current endeavors, uh, Dr. Perianes held the position of Chief Analytics Officer at Inditex, which is the world's largest fashion retail group and parent company of Zara. In this role, in this role, she played a pivotal role in developing the AI and data strategy, contributing uh, to the optimization of one of the world's largest, fastest uh, supply chain and distribution systems. And Dr. Perene's diverse experience also includes uh, funding Yokozuna Data, which is an AI firm in Tokyo that is focused on nudging and predicting individual video game player behavior. She holds a PhD in mathematics from the University of Reading and master's degree in string theory and theoretical physics from CERN and the Autonomous University of Madrid, respectively. And throughout her career, she has contributed to extinct petitions, so that CERN, Riken in Japan, and the German Weather Service. So you know this is an expert that is broad in the, you know, the onions, and we are very, very lucky, extremely grateful and appreciative that you easily accepted our invitation to have this conversation with us and to help journalists see math differently uh, from the solutions perspective. So thank you, thank you very much for joining us. 
And um, if you are watching, sorry for those that are watching this live stream on Facebook, I didn't forget you. So also thank you very much for joining us. We are glad that you can have us. You, we can be, we can spend some time with you. And uh, I wouldn't want to waste time. And uh, I want Dr. Uh, uh, Perianes to start a presentation. Then we have our interactive session as much as possible. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, can you, let me see if you can, let me allow you to share your slide. Yes. I think I've given you the magic power. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Paul. It's really a pleasure to, to be here today and speak to all of you. So let me share um, my slides. Just a second. Um, let me... Okay. Is that... So, well, as Paul has said, I mean, my, my background is... Uh, oops, sorry, let me just close this. Um, my background is um, is, uh, is theoretical physics, is mathematics. I have been working with mathematical modeling, with data science, with AI, um, almost twenty years. Okay, so I've been working in academia and industry. On all, I've been trying to solve all kind of problems since um, analyzing the vertical of the atmosphere with satellite data, uh, nudging behavior and predicting behavior of video game players in in Japan or working, I mean, with all kind of, I mean, reinforcement learning and, and research in academia for with uh, fundamental uh, machine learning methods. So, so I want to share with you, I mean, what we are doing in a causal foundry, okay? So that we focus on uh, using data, using mathematical modeling to, um, to, to understand realities, to predict behavior and to help um, healthcare, out to improve healthcare outcomes in low and middle income countries. Um, but I also want that uh, all what we are using, all the data that we are using, we are tracking and uh, to, to do these predictions, okay, it would be amazing if we can visualize with media, okay, if we can have a collaboration, if this, this, um, this organization that they are gathering this important information is not only, I mean, uh, um, share with the health authorities or with the organizations, with the non-governmental organization, et cetera, it would be great to share with the rest of the world, okay? Because if there is no data, it doesn't exist, whatever it is. So um, Castle Foundry is, um, is an organization that uh, focus on bringing personalization um, to improve healthcare, okay? So it's, um, it's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And uh, we are a tech organization, okay? We are data scientists, machine learning engineer, and um, machine learning scientists, software engineers to bring these products in, in low and middle income countries. So why why this? Okay, so um, just a bit of of context of the of the um, of work in the field that we work. So forty percent of the countries have uh, fewer than ten medical doctors per ten thousand people. So for instance, in Europe uh, we have uh, fifty medical doctors per ten thousand people. In US thirty, and in Nigeria four. Okay, so um, every day eight hundred ten women die for causes uh, related to pregnancy that are full preventable, and ninety nine percent of it of them happen in low and middle income countries. HIV is the leading cause of death for women of reproductive age worldwide, and it is the second most common cause of death among adolescents globally and the first in Africa. And the incidence of uh, preventable mortality is not randomly distributed. The most significant causal factor is poverty, and within it, people of color and, um, and, and people of color and, and children are overrepresented, okay? And within it, women and girls. So even if uh, in global health, uh, there are many challenges to, to solve, so um, there have been also big improvements, okay? The biggest improvements are mainly for two reasons, two causes. So first, the development of cheap, easy to use technologies like vaccines, okay? It's very easy to, to, to I mean, to distribute, well, maybe not to distribute, but at least to, 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 to make it happen and it's only one shot. And, and that's all, okay? Or for instance, antibiotics, one week of treatment is cheap, it's done. The same with contraceptives. But um, the second block of, um, of improvement that happens in global health has uh, the main reason are behavioral changes. It's just, for instance, washing hands or boiling water, okay? This change of habits uh, has uh, been fundamental of saving lives. And 
the data that we collect and the and um, the machine learning models that we do, that we do mainly focus on those behavioral changes. Okay, so focus on adherence to treatment to more complicated uh, technologies like um, like uh, uh, HIV treatment or tuberculosis treatment. So make it possible to make it happen. Okay, engage patients and providers at the end for better health outcomes. So rather than, um, for instance, I mean, big tech companies does, okay, so engagement just for the usage of digital technologies for entertainment, I mean, most of the times is engagement to improve health outcomes. So how do we do this? Okay, so um, we use, Mobile, mobile phones, okay? We use mobile health apps particularly. So in low and middle income countries, mobile technology is widely used for health. Indeed, it's used more in low and middle income countries than in high income countries, okay? Sometimes uh, the, the lack of infrastructures are, are substituted by, by technology. And mobile phone penetration is of course growing dramatically. Even if it's not full penetration of a smartphone, yes, yet it's going to happen, okay? So it's just a matter of time. So um, what do we do is that um, we use, I mean, this, uh, I mean, every phone that we wear is a computer, okay, it's a sensor, and we are gathering data all the time, and this big tech knows very well, okay, so it is the same, but just focus on behavioral changes for, it's a way of connecting, it's a, a way of, of, of tracking data that can be used for good purposes, okay. So, um, so what we do is focusing on personalizing. I mean, our, our organization focuses on personalizing clinical and behavioral interventions adapted to individual clinical parameters, environments, and habits to improve healthcare and medicine for all. Um, we focus mainly in two blocks, okay? The first is what I mentioned before, engagement of patients and providers, okay? Send timely reminders, adaptive interventions, recommendations, incentives, and predictions to improve visualization of behavior of healthcare workers and quality of care, treatment adherence, incentive to increase testing of vaccinations, self-management of chronic diseases, prediction of demand to reduce drug stock drug stockouts in pharmacies and clinics, and for instance, a prioritization of follow-up calls within call centers. So data and technology can be crucial to, to optimize all these processes and to visualize and to help to, to make I mean, effective interventions. The second block is uh, precision medicine. So machine learning and adaptive technologies can help to analyze data from electronic health records, biomarkers, to recommend and predict personalized treatment. Always leaving the last decision to the, I mean, to the to the providers, to the medical doctors, nurses, or midwives. So, so but help scanning the data so they can have handling all the information available that the data can provide to make better and informed decisions. So we never want to substitute uh, a medical doctor, okay? So just we want to give the tools to make it very efficient to have all the information to, to, to improve the diagnosis and prescriptions, et cetera. So as I said, I mean, like how we, we do this, okay? So we integrate and we also develop mobile health applications that um, first the applications that we, that we built are, I mean, use the same concept as uh, applications that people want to use. It's not that we are gathering data with surveys, okay? So just for the usage, I mean, you, you can see, I mean, what are the, the, the biases or where can we can improve, I mean, the, the situation of healthcare workers and also patients. So we integrate, I mean, uh, it's just called SDK, it's a piece of code within these uh, applications. And uh, what I do is to track the data in a very robust way. What is our focus, okay? Our focus is a, any AI system, any mathematical modeling is as good as the data that you fit in. Okay, so this is our first priority, high quality data. And what we have observed when we move to this, uh, to this field, okay, coming for instance from video games or other um, uh, technological uh, fields is that uh, there is no data, okay? Almost no data, almost no quality data is not uh, robust. So anything, if you use any machine learning models based on, on, uh, on data that is not good, I mean, uh, the result obviously is, is not going to be good, okay? And any decision that you make based on that is, uh, is, is not good, okay? So this is our first focus. And then based on this um, 
good source of information. Then we integrate that data into our machine learning platform where we create traits, metrics, anything that's first. I mean, look, uh, I mean, this information, these features, this uh, analysis are afterwards used to do mathematical modeling, okay? So they are the ingredients to, to do good predictions. Okay, I'm going to put an example later of the predictions that we that we do. But, um, but basically, I mean, uh, uh, just that information is useful for surveillance. It's useful for half information, for public health authorities, for improving, I mean, the distribution of drugs, distribution of vaccines, et cetera. Um, and then, I mean, like with the, with the mobile phones, the good thing is that information that is analyzed, interventions that can be personalized can reach back any user, okay? If we want to do an intervention, an incentive to increase, for instance, HPV testing, so we can reach all, I mean, teenagers with a simple click. So this is an example, some three examples of partners that we work with that uh, we are integrated and we, um, and we do like uh, adaptive interventions, personalized interventions. So when I say adaptive interventions, okay, it's, uh, it means that it's personalized, not only to the person, but also to the changing um, context or, or environment that the person suffers, okay? So uh, the recommendation that is going to be useful today to us, okay, it may be not be the useful, it's not useful in three months because we change. So this is why I call adaptive interventions. So, um, so for instance, in the in the first in, on the on the first case, Medtronic Labs so is an application that focuses on management of patients for community health workers, focus on primary care. So we provide recommendation of uh, scheduling and testing to to them. So I mean, apart from what they think is useful, okay, maybe I mean, it would be nice to have this additional test. And please, um, uh, you are visiting this person once a month. Maybe you can increase <clears throat> to do it once a week because the the risk that is calculated maybe can be higher. Okay, but at the end, everything is going to be the last word of the um, of the provider. Patient prioritization, also in cold centers. Normally, um, in cold centers, they sometimes, I mean, they do just random uh, selection. So trying to, to base on contextual information of uh, historical information of the family and also distance to the to the to the facility to help to, to the presentation of patient and also facilities comparison. Okay. So why one facility works very well, what another doesn't. So do adaptive experimentation, personalized experimentation, sister uh, facilities comparison. So we can do an intervention in one and not in the other and see what is the effect. So to try to, to improve the 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 efficiency and the and the service to the patient that is the core. So the second is, for instance, Life Bank. Life Bank is like um, Uber Eats, but uh, rather than distrib of distributing uh, food, they distribute uh, blood and oxygen. Okay, so this happened in Lagos in Nigeria, and uh, and we provide with um, demand forecasting, resource allocation, incentive uh, also for demand generation, and so on. Basically, the same recommendations you have with Uber, you can have it for uh, other purposes. Now, I mean, like in Lagos, for instance, the traffic jam is, as um, I'm sure many of you know. Um, is uh, is big okay? So the distribution of blood sometimes doesn't arrive on time. So this is uh, uh, the best way. I mean to to be able to to distribute uh, timely. So um, the third one is um, is is related to, that I suppose here is related with midwives. So it's with Maternity Foundation. It's an online learning certification program for many with midwives across Africa and India. And uh, and mainly, I mean, they try to improve the capacity building, the skills of them. So, and what we do is uh, similar to Duolingo, but uh, trying to incentivize that the midwives continue studying, improve their skills. And at the end, I mean, the goal is to reduce the, the number of uh, mortality of women and, and newborns in low and middle income countries. Okay, so engage them into learning. I mean, sometimes the recommendation is not the, the subject that the pass, it's the subject that they like the most, so they continue improving. So who benefits of this type of prediction of it, this type of analysis? And I, I, it's true that I, I, I put many stakeholders, but I didn't include media and I sold. So um, at the end is uh, first our partners. So we partner with organizations that they are deployed and they're doing the business um, in, in different areas of, I mean, our 
mainly source of data is coming from healthcare providers, although sometimes also directly applications that work with patients. And uh, within healthcare providers, we normally work with pharmacists, with midwives, and with community health workers. These are the first I mean, three roles that uh, we are integrated, integrating and that can reach the highest number of patients. So patients are the center of every intervention, every KPI, every analysis and statistics is measured on, on uh, how, how is improving the situation of patients and also we want to i mean we do uh we share information uh with public health authorities so they can uh, for instance have community health worker is searching a lot about uh, particular symptoms in an area of a country it can happen that there is an, out an outbreak of any type of disease so this type of of, uh, of data can be crucial to do timely interventions and uh, try to avoid I mean, the spread of uh, um, epidemiological disease. And also funders, okay? So as you know, there are many funders, I mean, uh, that uh, that are investing on technologies and solutions to try to improve or eradicate different diseases. So having this information can uh, help to, to, to do much more accurate and effective investments. Okay, so this uh, also at the end is, is visualization, is, um, is sharing and also increase some of the investments that, that they do. So here are some, uh, some examples of applicability and case studies of different uh, targets of diseases or fields that uh, we are uh, integrating, gathering data, um, predicting and, uh, and sending interventions and measuring their, their impact. So for instance, in the case of frontline head workers or community head workers, in, uh, I mean, we do in different countries, this is just an example. So we use reinforcement learning based triage. I can explain later what it is, okay? But basically reinforcement learning is what is behind of uh, all these technologies of self um, um, uh, driven, driven, driving cars, or even like a large language models. Okay, so there are different subtypes of it and so on. But uh, basically it's an idea that is able to learn or make decisions on the fly. So, um, so for instance, type of um, of uh, of predictions or recommendations we perform is a scheduling uh, of uh, like what I said before, a scheduling additional test recommendations, so more screenings, some more um, tests in the blood tests, etc., and referral to of other facilities. Okay, even if sometimes can hesitate, always with no harm principle. So trying to to support the work of community health workers and frontline health workers on the field. So for instance, and this is related also with the, the work we are doing with community health workers. And as I mentioned before, also facility pair wise matching. So at the end, I mean, we want to do massive, and this is also what Big Tech does, okay? Massive cycles of experimentation, okay? Let's try uh, what it works. In the same way that Netflix, I mean, um, is doing this trials all time, okay? So to you, I mean, to one person, give one particular uh, display to another different and see what engages the most, okay? So we do the same, but with trying to improve the efficiencies of, uh, of uh, facilities, okay? So um, what we do is like uh, classify facilities in, uh, in many different ways, okay? So we, we call it sister facilities. So in a way that when we do an intervention, we can do one uh, receive the treatment and the other doesn't receive the intervention, okay? So we can able to, to distinguish if the intervention that we perform improves the, the outcome that we have of interest, okay? So and statistics at the end can help a lot to, to be able to distinguish, okay, this type of intervention is, um, is helping a lot, okay? Maybe it's incentivizing um, community health workers to, to walk more and to reach door-to-door -to, -door to people, or maybe it's increasing, maybe it's lacking of, of uh, capacity building, so we need to run an on-site campaign, okay? So we need to find out what, what is the reason maybe one facility is working less optimal than another. It's just maybe because of the skills of the, of the, of the workers, it's maybe because of the profile of the community that is close to the facility, so we need another type of skills. Data and, and analyzing, I mean, with uh, mathematical statistical techniques can give us a lot of information to, to do much more smart funding, interventions, etc. So um, as I mentioned, uh, midwifery is one of a, of, of a huge field of interest and that needs a lot of help. Okay, as I mentioned before, it's full preventable. 
So, um, so we try to, I mean, incentivize their skills and uh, send just in time adaptive interventions. Um, I'm good in time, Paul. Okay. So, of course. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, some example that we are doing with Maternity Foundation, for instance, we, I mean, since a midwife, okay, start using the application, we are able to predict. So uh, what, is the, what is the level that is more likely that the midwife doesn't pass the exam, the certification? And, uh, and also, I mean, we're able to adapt the curriculum to them and also to be able to nudge them, motivate them. So they study more and they, they pass, I mean, this particular certification, okay? So we predict those that they are close to pass, but they are not going to pass. So let's put more effort to that. Okay, so and for instance, these are the corps of uh, of behavior, the corps of learning of everyone, and also the corps of engagement on on this. So this type of course again, I mean, uh, is what uh, also I use with other like, the most successful applications. So um, we also focus on epidemiological diseases, on uh, TB, tuberculosis, um, HIV, and malaria, for instance. So. We are talking about diseases that can be prevented, diagnosed, and treated. Okay, and however, I mean the the number of deaths are are, are huge every year. Okay, so we try to 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 incentivize, provide on our side. I mean, uh, also patients to to do a behavioral change, and at the end, we can eradicate them. So, um, so in the case of tuberculosis, we focus on adherence to treatment. The same with um, HIV, also increased testing. And motivate community health workers um, to to do more testing and also personalize. I mean, in the case of malaria, personalize incentives to pharmacists or community health workers to take malaria tests um, before prescribing a treatment. And also, for instance, incentivize and also be able to detect fraud when there is a bed net distribution that is uh, every year happening. So. Um, um, one also one field that is uh, very important for us is uh, pharmacists. Pharmacists at the end are the first point of contact for most of the um, most of the patients in the world. Okay, related to healthcare, and it's extremely important that they have the, the availability of essential medicines. I mean, in every point of uh, of sale. So um, the average availability of medicines in public sector health facilities across LMICs is as low as almost thirty percent. Okay, so we work a lot with them. Okay, so that's that, that's extremely important because there is almost no accountability about uh, about the drugs that are sold, about uh, what is happening, for instance, in Africa in uh, in this field. Okay, so and this is extremely important to first motivate uh, motivate pharma. Okay, to invest more and also to ensure. I mean, what is happening? What is pres being prescribed? How to increase the variety of um, of drugs? I mean, inform pharmacies to have to to do better prescriptions and and also be able to to detect what is the demand of the of the patients. Okay, so. Um, um, so what we do, I mean, I'm going to explain more now about this, but what we do is like prediction of the month. As Paul has mentioned before, I was working in um, in Zara, okay, the the indie text at the fashion retailer, and uh, we we were focusing a lot on on prediction of uh, of the month. Okay, it's one of the fastest supply chains in the world. So um, what we are trying to bring here is also this prediction of the month. Okay, so we can send recommendations. We have sophisticated prediction of the month system, but at the end, this translates on recommendations to pharmacies. Start ordering tests, this type of drug, et cetera, because you're going to run out of stock in two months and it's going to take more than two months to, to get, I mean, the, the, the supplies. So um, about medicines, okay, why this is uh, so important is the first, I mean, in uh, most countries in LMIC is, um, uh, as I said, I mean, the, there is uh, no accountability. And one of the reasons is also because um, they strongly rely on the intermediaries, okay, on middlemen that they are, I mean, bring this distribution system, okay? So at the end, because of the different uh, multi-tier supply chain layers, okay? So there is the, the demand is, is diluted, okay? What is demanded by the patients, what is needed by the community, and what at the end the manufacturer gets, is unrelated, okay? So this makes first, I mean, that the drugs are much more expensive and there is no truth of information about what, what happens, okay? And also without talking about fake 
drugs, etc. Okay, so more and more are emerging uh, B two B e commerce platforms. Okay, like Uber Eats, but rather than or Amazon, but rather to distribute directly to the consumer, distribute to the pharmacist. And this is fantastic. I mean, for many reasons. First, I mean, reduce the the intermediaries, uh, the number of intermediaries, and second, is able to to we have data. Okay, again, I mean, if there is no data as an assist, okay? So um, uh, so with this information, we can do a lot of things. I mean, tr I mean, try to more efficient supply chain, uh, point out uh, deficiency, put out, I mean, some, uh, some, I mean, some problems, fundamental problems that uh, can be solved with uh, the right intervention. And also because of these applications, we can reach all pharmacists, okay? So if there is any campaign, so, um, so it can be performed, it can be reached in a very, efficient and quick manner. So at the end, I mean, also, I mean, like the pharmacies, and this is a very important uh, investment site, I mean, are becoming more and more as a health hub. So people uh, go there, I mean, do a screening, have tests, and can be a direct point of directly uh, refer to higher facilities, can be extremely helpful to optimize a fragmented uh, healthcare system. So at the end, I mean, what, what we are doing with data and with mathematical modeling and so on, I mean, it's like a connect all dots, okay? Connect all points, like uh, the inventory, the warehouse, what arrives, how to, how to I mean, reach the pharmacies, the, um, connect with the different applications, connect with patients, even if they don't have a smartphone, we can reach with SMS, et cetera. I'm oh, sorry, this is a mistake. And um, this is just a summary of, um, of the countries that we are currently working. So we are based in Barcelona in Spain, but we, we also have, I mean, we are incorporated in the, in the US and the main countries we are working is Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Angola, South Africa, Pakistan and Indonesia for all the fields I, I mentioned before, but uh, we, are, we are expanding more. These are just some examples of the um, of the private sector that uh, we are working. We also collaborate. I mean, and work definitely with the Villa Melinda Gates Foundation, with Global Fund, and uh, other ministries of health of the of the countries that I have mentioned. Um, I don't know. I mean, how are you? I mean, like, uh, would you like to talk more a bit mathematics? Do you like to go to the um, to the questions? Let me see. Well, what do you think? Do you, still, do you still have more slides? I have like a, this and a, one. I mean, I can do two more and that's all. But if you prefer, I mean, we can go to the questions and the discussions. I think you should finish a little bit. I finish? Yes, try and finish, please. Okay. So I just wanted to, to depending on how, how um, I mean, if you wanted to go a bit deeper, okay. So about the mathematical modeling itself, okay. So as I mentioned before, like adaptive interventions is uh, is at the end the goal. Predic predictions itself are good, okay. But if there is no action afterwards, what is the point, okay? So every, um, in, I mean, every prediction that we do is with the goal of, target this population, okay? If there is a group of patients that they are predicted to have a relapse or that they are not, they are not going to follow the, the adherence to the treatment, okay? Let's make an, let's find out what is the right action, okay? That it works for them. And this is why experimentation, I mean, works very well, okay? We can try this, doesn't work, let's try another and find out with the data what it works, okay? So, so we treat the data in this way, okay? We, we work always with the time series data, okay? So all information that we retrieve from the, from the digital devices, can also be medical devices and mobile health apps, um, is, uh, is done in a way that is like a time series journey, okay? Like how behavior, how clinical uh, projections or I mean, health or disease evolve with time. Okay, at individual manner, either if he's patient, either if he's pharmacist, either if he's facility, okay? And based on that, we have full control of the interventions that we do and what is the impact of them, okay? Of course, this is, this, this is um, um, in a scalable operational way. So this is a machine learning model. So it's able to scan and, and to detect, I mean, who is having, an, who is having an, 
an uh, impact or not, and so on. But uh, basically, consists on that. So we we foresee that a person is going to have a relapse or is going to abandon the treatment. So then let's do an intervention and let's try to improve the healthcare outcome at the end. Okay. So this is a bit the the essence of what we do. This is just a bunch of, uh, of uh, mathematical models that we use. I mean, reinforcement learning, causal inference, um, risk characterization, et cetera. Okay, so if any have, anyone wants to go deeper on this, I can go, but I think that's, that's all from my side. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I would like you to catch your breath uh, for a while. Uh, while I um, give, um, some insights to journalists. We have we already have some questions already. So, and I think um, what I am really happy that you've been able to do is uh, to actually show um, mathematics uh, in action and to peel back layers of artificial intelligence and quick information for journalists. It's really, really important because I know a lot of you are probably written something, hey, hi, we do this, hey, hi, we do this, hey, hi, everybody talking about, hey, hi, we do this. But um, there is a set of stories that you can write when you have an understanding of how these systems work, even if you have basic, vague knowledge of how they work. And um, like uh, it was mentioned last week, you don't have to be an expert in hey, hi. And when, uh, when uh, she's done uh, catching her breath, I'm going to bring her back and we're going to have an interactive session, which will be like an example of how you can engage uh, with experts like her and to be able to simplify this concept in a way that people can understand, everybody can understand that you can have really, really good stories. So I would pick an issue, which is a digital health as she's in Africa, she's working in Africa, knows a lot about it. And we are going to have a conversation that could potentially be in a story and you are going to see how you can have that conversation, even though I have absolutely no background training uh, in artificial intelligence. Uh, I can We can do that quickly for 10 minutes uh, so that you can see how uh, those kinds of conversations are, are able to happen and that uh, you can be able to appreciate it and adapt it to your skills. So this is something I've been able to go out uh, with my interaction talking to experts like her so i will bring you back now so uh let's just forget that you're on the webinar let's discuss our interactions as two persons um if you look back at what happened during the covid pandemic and we had lots of predictions about how the the pandemic will play out in a lot of the world. There were scary predictions about how uh, the predict how the outlook of disease would be in Africa, uh, which didn't happen. So why do you think, uh, what from the perspective of the predictory tools, uh, how do you, did you think the prediction was wrong or do you think the prediction compelled African countries to take actions that mitigated the uh, dear outcomes that were initially predicted? Well, I mean, like, uh, it was it was very complicated, okay, in the case of COVID, because at the end, um, there were no data. I mean, at the beginning, I mean, when they started, they had no idea. I mean, no one had any idea about uh, there is no data, okay? If there is no data, so at the end, you cannot do predictions. So they were trying, okay? But um, for me, it was, I mean, as a, as a, as a mathematician, it was very interesting because you could see, like, different countries, the, doing different type of interventions, okay? For instance, Sweden didn't do an intervention, okay? Let's make, you know, the disease spread and let's see what happens, okay? Others like um, like Spain, okay? So they have very restricted uh, lockdown, okay? So is every country were doing different things and we were like in a experimentation, worldwide experimentation. So nobody knew. So why they fail? because they, they had no data, okay? So they were doing some projections on first guess, but it was more human based on other diseases. So at the end, if you don't have robust data, you don't have information, you can do whatever, but it doesn't work, okay? So now we know better how has been the evolution, of course, because now we have data. And we have very rich data, again, because many interventions were performed worldwide, okay? And uh, at the beginning, you remember, I mean, like washing hands, the most important, and then it was basically, I mean, just respiratory, okay? So then you tried, it didn't work. It's what I was talking before, okay? So they were just doing life 
interventions, okay, with a no, no, no clue. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if we want to have like a robust insights onto regarding how um, we can better maximize insights from data uh, from your experience in African countries, uh, what can be done? Because um, we saw these tools, we still see these tools be incredibly applied in developed countries, but in Africa, uh, we are not seeing uh, especially from a local perspective, fully utilizing this tool. So what is still missing for African countries and developed countries to get on board to fully unleash the power of uh, AI predictions? I think, I mean, the, 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 the importance of the data, I mean, I say this all time, is fundamental, okay? First, to understand the problem and then to define the strategies and so on. I mean, we are very lucky, I mean, that more and more there's, there's uh, mobile phones that can able to reach everyone. So that is much easier to implement the interventions, to see the reactions of them. So, so at the end, uh, I believe that proper usage of technology can, can bring a lot of advantages, okay? So on, on, on defining better, to, and also to, to show the truth, okay? So, so what is happening? And, um, and, and this type of data, okay, at the end, if they are well integrated into the, into the devices, um, there is no way to manipulate okay so that's that's what it is so um, so yeah so i believe that uh, that empowering this i mean can bring a lot of benefits yes thank you and uh, you mentioned um, you mentioned you also mentioned uh, the potential uh, the current existing tools the current ability to predict tools and um, if uh, a, a journalist is interested in talking about uh, what predictions are currently saying? What what is really really alarming? What do you think? Insights when you look at the data that is shouting something not to be done about this thing, but is not getting attention. What would that be for you? I mean, supporting any any report, any analysis, any study with data makes the any 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 news anything much stronger. Okay, so that's uh, that's what I believe. Okay, so based on figures, how this can be, how was calculated. I mean, what is the the situation? How was improved? Or how how it, it didn't improve? Okay, so these quantitative measures. Okay, so can help a lot, and also visualization of them. Okay, so be able to visualize this, visualize this data with plots, so we can see. Okay, so that at the end, I mean, it's inform the 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 people, and it's fundamental that we also work together. Okay, so the the data scientists, the ones that they're analyzing this information, and at the end, not only reach um, uh, public health authorities or big organizations or nonprofits and so on, so also to inform the people, okay? So that more and more, I mean, they're more aware, they're more, I mean, they're able to reach, I mean, mathematics and numbers and statistics to them and, and, and see, I mean, how they can improve anything, how is the evolution of it. Yeah, thank you. So there is this, uh, uh, there is this intentional um, pro uh, propos this proposition that digital uh, digitization and data can help in closing a lot of gaps in healthcare in African countries, especially places where um, healthcare manpower workforce is very, very limited. Uh, you are working on the field. And um, so which gaps do you think uh, digitization can help close quickly um, in developing countries? This is what we are trying to do. We try to move quickly, okay? Because at the end, I mean, we want to show value. We want to convince more stakeholders. So we have seen how big tech has improved dramatically efficiency in many aspects, okay? That before it was costing a lot of effort, just with, uh, I mean, I mean, mobile applications that are based on data. So for instance, think about Google Maps, okay? So I want to go from here to there. Before, you didn't know. Now it's much easier. For me, it's much easier to, to, to move in cities that have never been before. Okay. So this is the same that we want to, to bring to, to, to providers, to healthcare providers. Okay. So let's find an optimal way to, okay, all the data inf inf information of all your patients help to optimize your way 
to, to improve the, the patient situation, okay? So in which aspects? We are targeting the ones, okay, that they're full preventable and try to, to bring all the information so we can improve. So as I said, the biblical diseases, TB, HIV, malaria, or, or for instance, midwifery or community health workers, okay? At the end, community health workers are people that are in contact with, with, uh, with, with the communities, with the people that uh, needs the most, and they're fundamental piece, okay? But they don't have such a strong education on the field. So any information that we can bring that can optimize and make their work easier, um, even if it's based on very sophisticated predictions, as for instance, Google Maps or any other application of this kind, okay? But at the end, serve very easily to their daily job. Yes, thank you. And uh, probably one last question uh, for this interactive session, and uh, I, will, I will now tell our journalists what we've been able to do uh, indirectly. They are not noticing it. Um, you've mentioned a lot of, a, a quite number of applications of uh, interventions like uh, your organization is doing using data and the like and the rest. But uh, we don't hear much about uh, your organization, but we hear a lot about the innovations that you drive that your data is supporting to massively drive. Uh, if I'm interested now, uh, for journalists that you've been covering, uh, public health you've been covering, uh, especially in, uh, in uh, startups that she mentioned, uh, tech solutions that she mentioned, uh, if I'm interested in writing a story that doesn't just look at the uh, intervention that you are backing, but the, te but the technology that backs it, um, how open will an organization like you be able to tell me, for instance, how we are using data to support <clears throat> to support um, the Uber Eats of blood transfusion and oxygen in Africa? How open are you be able to share insight like that? Because that gives my readers a unique perspective to writing a story that they've probably heard before. So we can we need to work together with our partners, okay? Um, because at the end, the, I mean, the data is from, from them, okay? But uh, but I'm sure they're going to be more than happy to to work together, okay? Because what we want is to have everyone wants to have bigger impacts and also I mean motivate other startups, other organizations to to be able to to bring this accountability, those predictions, and so on. So I'm sure that um, we we can find a way. I mean, and they're going to be very happy. Thank you very much. I'll catch your breath a little bit. Uh, let me interact with our audience uh, members to actually give them some. And now we go to the questions. So as you've seen in a little demo of that interview, that is how you can actually, there is no concept that is too complex uh, for you to understand. Um, with, there is no expert uh, that is uh, that what they are describing is too abstract that they cannot simplify, especially if you're coming from a case in point. Uh, you've probably reported a lot of issues, a lot of interventions, a lot of initiatives uh, extensively. Everybody has probably done the same thing over and over again. But as you can see, we can just get a really good story idea by looking at the innovations, the technology, the solutions, the predictions, the models, the artificial intelligence that powers these uh, approaches. So which actually expands your reach, uh, allows you to pitch really new stories. That's basically how you can do it. I don't know the set lines that buy, that bugs the solutions that she mentioned, but by being able to interact, to have that conversation, then we can start looking at this uh, from a new, a different perspective. So we are going to take some questions right now. And as we uh, rush to the end of this session, uh, Okay, uh, to get it. So I'm going to take some of the questions that we have right now. So Daoud would like to know, uh, uh, will I be right to conclude that uh, uh, mathematics reporting has so many things in common with data journalism? If yes, do they have any difference and what are they? Can you provide some answers and I can help from the journalism perspective? Is I mean, of course, um, it's similar in the way that, um, um, I mean, it's of course. I mean, the the important thing is the is the is the um, is the ingredients is the data. Okay, so we both do a stories. Okay, so the only is that uh, the stories or, or the metrics and the feature preparation on all the data that we introduce to the machine learning models. Okay, for predictions and so on. Um, are used, I mean, in a massive way, massive scale, okay? 
And at the end, I mean, what I think journalists, I mean, will take is like the mo the most important, um, I mean, take point, okay, to be able to transmit this story to all public, okay, or the target population that you, you want to, to focus. But basic, I mean, it's like, a, I think the data journalist is more like a summary of it, okay? So what are the main conclusions? And we go to the detail to be able to do very precise, personalized interventions and predictions. Yes, uh, Mohamed is asking, I'm poor at mathematics. Uh, so what are the easy tips that an expert like you can give uh, for me to better understand uh, these complex issues and um, so that I can uh, to improve my reporting? And I, I think um, uh, Mauna Babangida is also interested in simple uh, getting it, get, uh, what tips do you have in simplifying these complex concepts? At the end, I mean, I mean, of course, I mean, the mathematics that are behind can be can be complex, okay? But um, as I always say, if we are not able to explain in um, in simple ways that uh, we don't fully understand it, okay? So, um, so at the end, I mean, what is more important is not the algorithm itself, is the conclusion and the robust of the, and the accuracy of the results that we obtain, okay? So um, everyone, even if it's very complex, for instance, uh, chat GPT, okay? Everybody see the solution, okay? Everybody sees, I mean, how the impact can be, what are the, the weakness that it has right now, you know, how confident we can be and, and so on, okay? So it must be as easy as that, okay? So I think that the most important is as to, to, to focus on the results and uh, and at the end is like a is uh, some mathematical tools okay that uh, help us to sweep data in a massive way and be able to to obtain predictions there are several questions regarding tools that you recommend uh, for them to actually basic tools to start with and um, to interacting with the complex mathematics concepts any suggestions mm. Let me see. I, I mean, I myself. I mean, when I try to to, I I read, of course, like uh, scientific papers, okay, for my daily work. Um, but also because I try to explain these complex concepts to all audience uh, many times, um, I like a lot. For instance, just a very puntual resource. The economist okay later is having more and more um ai sections that where they try to explain these um complex concepts uh, for all public and i really like how the work that they are doing to be able to to make it um, available for everyone thank you thank you so much so what is your personal experience with uh, dealing with journalists interacting with journalists so what has been your experience it's, well, it's very good. Every time, I mean, um, I, I mean, I have in contact with some of them. Okay, so and uh, so far, very good. Uh, they always ask me difficult questions, so that uh, challenged me, and I like it. The questions that surprise me that there is not the typical questions. <laughs> so, as a, as a mathematician expert. Um... Do you have a, a what what is your suggestion for journalists that uh, regarding uh, interacting with experts like you? So I mean I, I think for us it's extremely important we work with journalists. Okay, so we want to to um, to transmit what is happening in the data. Okay, we want to transmit to everyone. Okay, to governments, to um, big or, I mean nonprofit organizations, to funders, to the to the people, to the providers but also to everyone, to the population, okay? So at the end, I mean, for instance, if uh, if uh, mothers knows that they need to put a vaccine in order to save the, I mean, to avoid that their kid has malaria, okay? So it's good that we spread, I mean, the, the, the robust statistical studies that has been done. So everyone is aware, okay? So that's the way at the end that we, we have of changing things. So, um, so working with you, I mean, is fundamental. So just reach us. We are more than happy to talk to you. Yeah, uh, thanks for that. Um, still scanning. Okay, there's this technical question uh, uh, regarding uh, how easy is it to get disaggregated data when working with AI applications? My question is related to geography and spatial data. Uh, where there is no baseline data, what is the best way to proceed? And from your experience, what has been the industry data practice? So related to spatial data? Yes. 
Okay, so that depends on the organization itself. Okay, if they give us a special info, if they allow us to have a, a special data, that's fantastic. Okay, we can do a lot of things, um, but sometimes they are restricted depending on the country. Okay, so um, we cannot have access to that information. So then we do our best. Okay, but for instance, how much needs to walk a person from the community to the facility? This is an information that is extremely useful for us, okay? Distribution of mosquito nets, okay? Also to detect if the distribution has been as planned, I mean, it's um, efficient and so on, being how much is taken from one person to distribute for another and so on is fundamental information, okay? So although these kind of things, or for instance, when we are talking about um, uh, this, uh, like Uber Eats, like Life Bank, I mean, as I mentioned, of distribution of oxygen and blood, okay? So being, finding the, the smartest route and so on, I mean, is, is very important. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, for me, I also want to know um, with, uh... okay, uh, Sherry is asking, we have lots of questions already. Uh, Sherry is asking, what is the effective way for Chinese to present mathematical data that would be easy for the public to chew. Any points to avoid? What do you think people should avoid when they are communicating data? Or what do you see in the news? I say, oh, oh no, 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 no. This is atrocious, atrocious uh, in an attempt to simplify mathematics. Yeah. So sometimes if you need to explain something that if you really feel you need to explain something or do it. Okay. So, I mean, I think robustness is important. It doesn't mean that you enter into the detail, okay? Because sometimes scientific people try to give a lot of detail, okay? So that's for all public, I mean, is is destructive, okay? The main point, I mean, go for it, but sometimes you need to explain something, okay? This is work, okay? Because at the end you will need to understand it to explain with easy words and so on. But um, put the effort, you know, and 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 try to explain it. But go to the main point. That's that's what I mean. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would like you to catch your breath and I'll come back to you for your last remarks. And uh, thank you so much. So I uh, really, really, really appreciate you joining us today. And um, we have information regarding um, the additional aspects of this initiative, which is our story grants that we have. And uh, so I hope we have been able to, we've been able to expand your knowledge and open your eyes to insightful potential story ideas that you can explore about how from last week, even to this week. And I want you to start uh, putting your ideas together so that um, by the, on the day of the last uh, session, uh, you can actually turn in your, your submission. And I promise you, I promise you to be so, so easy to submit your application. I know, I'm a journalist myself. I know how, how tedious some of these applications can be. So I'm not going to put you through that. I will strive and ensure that they are simple uh, to actually do so. But start looking for really good ideas that you can easily implement, that you can really uh, approach and uh, undertake as soon as possible. So please and please start doing that. Like we did yesterday, I wanted to quickly fill a short form and uh, please and please let us know is just to tell is for you to revise what you've learned today and how you intend to apply them and it's also a way for us to know that you attended this session and um, so that we can keep track of who qualifies to participate so once again now uh, here's the form uh, tell us the name of your country and um, let us know what uh, where you what you learned from today and how you plan to uh, to apply them it can just be a single sentence each and uh, that will be it so thank you thank you very much uh, for today and uh, next week uh, we are going to have an awesome session we'll be joined by another mathematics journalist uh, that has that has uh, that has uh, been curating that has curated uh, insight on how to effectively succeed in mathematics reporting and how to approach mathematical reporting from all sides. He has over 20, we are bringing somebody that has done it for over 20 years. Really, yes, over 20 years. And uh, I can't wait for you to share, to have insights from her. And um, I, interestingly, uh, Dr. Africa, uh, interestingly, I'm really, really impressed that a lot of women are into mathematics is something that I found quite interesting. We have like six speakers lined up for the series, only one male. And uh, it wasn't an intentional effort to actually, uh, we didn't seek out to say, no, we are only going after 
female mathematics experts, but we are just seeing female mathematics experts. Uh, is that a trend that you agree is happening, or is it just a mere coincidence? I'm talking about gender, uh, women representation in mathematics. What are your thoughts? Just black, <laughs> because <laughs> there are not so many. <laughs> really? So we've just been lucky. Why am I getting out of it? But not only lucky. I mean, you're, you know, you're doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for that. So uh, the next session, that next week will also be led by a female. Um, she's also a mathematics, uh, it's a mathematician uh, that, uh, that is also a mathematics journalist. So I hope to see you there. And uh, you can already register uh, for that session via the link that I've just put there. And we are going to have so much fun uh, learning about mathematics reporting. Uh, you are going to tap into a over 20 year worth of experience on how to succeed uh, in this. So I'm back to you now, doctor, uh, for your last remarks and um, any comments that you think uh, you would like to pass across as we close this session. So um, I just want to say, let's work together. Okay, so let's collaborate more because we, we want to work with you. Data experts, data that uh, I mean, data scientists, we need to, to work together to, to, to spread the truth, to spread the, I mean, to, to improve things. Okay, so please contact, uh, I mean, the ones that we are working in the field. And, um, and yeah, and thank you for, for coming today. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope. You've had fun. I've really, really had fun. I've enjoyed myself. I've been inspired. I've been, I've been educated. I've been enlightened. I've been further empowered to be um, an impressive mathematics uh, reporter. And I'm going to actively try my hands. Uh, so if possibly, I'd, I'm not sure if it's fair for me to also pitch a story in the competition that uh, we are judging the winner. I know that is wrong and I'm not going to do that, but really I'm motivated. I've seen a lot of story ideas that I can work on already. And I hope as you are passing, going through the series with us, uh, you are also getting, uh, getting educated and enlightened on how to better uh, do uh, mathematics stories. Uh, like we said, uh, somebody is asking for videos, links to the videos. This video will be curated on YouTube, the uh, IC, uh, ICFJ's YouTube page. And, um, and um, it's important you check it out. Somebody asked for the link to last week's video. So uh, I'm putting the link to last week's video in the comment box right now. So you can access it. And uh, by tomorrow, uh, the video of this session would also be available. Uh, quick note, uh, Dr. Rukana, will you be able to share your slides with us? We often send emails to attendees. Uh, is it okay? If, are you okay? We, are you comfortable with sharing the slides with us? Absolutely. I will send you later. Yes, please, please do send it. I'm good, and I'm going to pass it on uh, to uh, attendees. So, on behalf of myself, uh, to on behalf of the International Center for Journalists, I want to thank you for accepting our invitation, and I also want to thank every attendee uh, for attending this incredible session. I hope you've learned a lot. To learn more about this initiative and other SFJS initiatives, I wanted to check out the International Center for Journalists website on www.icfj.org. I'll put that link in the link in the comment box below. And also, if you want to learn more about this uh, Pamela Award Forum on Global Crisis Reporting Initiative, to be able to access resources, tools, and other materials that we share, uh, a good way, a quick quickest way for you to engage with me uh, and with the forum is for you to be part of our Facebook community, uh, which I'm putting, if you're not part of that Facebook community already, I encourage you to do that. Just click that link, uh, fill the form, request to join the Facebook forum, and I'm going to accept that. I'm the administrator of that. I'm one of the administrators of that page. So I personally welcome you to that Facebook community where we can keep in touch, connect, and uh, socialize, bring you information about new opportunities. And if you are in search for new resources, new tools, and new opportunities uh, for your journalism career, I encourage you to check out IGNet's resource platform on www.IGNet.com. Org. And um, that will be it. If you have any questions, if you have any additional comments, uh, you can really you can just reply uh, to the email uh, that will be coming to your inbox tomorrow, uh, asking for your feedback regarding this session. From me and from everybody, uh, we wish we will and 
exciting and fun field rest of the day. Uh, thank you very much, Sherry Sage. Thank you, Paul and Africa, for giving us another empowering lecture day. Uh, have a good day, night, everyone. So we appreciate it. And uh, we also appreciate uh, Africa. She has been meticulous, resourceful, and um, we appreciate your insight and your willingness to talk to journalists. And uh, I expect, expect me to stay in touch. I hope others will also stay in touch when they're interested in reporting stories. This is how you build your connection. And I hope this session is extended into more much more cordial relationships with journalists from different parts of the world. So for me and my team, I say thank you and enjoy the rest of the day.